I can't do it with that. Why don't you run up here? Paul. How's that? Test, test. I think that's pretty good. Okay. Thanks. Okay. So I called this talk inside the Banshee Awesome Factory because our community and our projects at this point where things are humming along, we've got these releases cranked out at regular intervals, we're consistently adding new features that are really cool, and we've got this huge, active, energetic community that's contributing new code, making Banshee better, and welcoming new contributors all the time. So I wanted to give you a sense of what it's like to be involved in Banshee development. And if you haven't been involved in development before, give you the confidence to jump in. Let's see if I can get this switching. So I want you to jump in with confidence when you get an itch to add a new feature or fix a bug. You, know, you don't have to be a programmer to start contributing to Banshee, even for its code. You don't have to be a C-sharp wizard. Um, anybody can get started. So back in 2005, I'd been using GNOME for quite a few years, but I'd submitted a couple of bug reports, and that's about all the contributing I'd done. But I really wanted to get more involved. So I you know, followed Planck GNOME religiously. I kept up with all the latest distro releases. I even applied for a couple internships at Zimian and Red Hat, which I didn't get. But you know, I, was, I was eager to get involved, but I didn't really know how or where I could help best. And so that left me wishing that someone could look at me and my skill set and say, here's where you can help best. But you know, not everybody has time to evaluate newcomers like that. So if you are using GNOME and you're using an app and you find a, a bug that annoys you or a feature you want to add, that's your starting point. Once you have that, you're ready to go. And there's only a couple steps you really need to take to get started contributing. Namely, install the software dependencies that your project depends on, and then get the source code. And once you have that, you're ready to go. So for Banshee, we have the exact steps you'll need to take on our website. And for every distro, we've got it exactly laid out. It should only take a few minutes to get going. So I got started contributing to GNOME, and, and Banshee in particular, by having read a lot of this document, the GNOME Human Interface Guidelines. It's got a ton of great content on good design for applications, um, usability, consistency. So it's a, a great document to familiarize yourself with. Um, so I'd read enough of this to catch a few inconsistencies in Banshee's user interface. In particular, here's one example of literally a, a bug I fixed, my very first patch to Banshee, with the text next to a checkbox. So the HIG says that this text should be in sentence case, only the first letter of the first word should be capitalized. And so, you know, Banshee's this huge project. It's got a lot of code and a lot of files, but I have some text in the UI, so I can find exactly where I need to make my change really easily by just searching for this piece of, for this string. You can do a recursive grep, grep-r. You can use monodevelop to search within the project or solution. You search for that string, you go right to the file you need to change, and you edit the string, you save the file, you rerun Banshee, you fixed it. And you produce a patch to send to Bugzilla, and so here's a patch for people who aren't too familiar with patches. There are two lines, one with a prefixed with a, a minus sign and one with a plus sign. So you know, I removed the eject when finished that's capitalized and added the HIG valid string. And it looks like this. We've fixed a, a small bug. We've helped make the free software desktop a little more self-consistent. You don't have to be a programmer to do a, a fix like that. And here's another one of my favorite HIG rules. In .desktop files, which contain the name and description of applications and are used to populate your applications menu, so when you are browsing the menu and you hover over an application, a tooltip pops up with the description. And so Banshees used to read, a music management and playback application. But the HIG says that this text should start with an action verb. So I changed it in much the same way that I changed that checkbox text to read play and organize your music. And I also fixed the casing. So these are changes that anybody can do. You don't have to be a programmer or anything. And you can get started contributing to GNOME, to Banshee right now. 
So I want to actually show you that was one way of contributing to Banshee. You can do a small fix. Another way is to make a new feature. So I actually want to show you how fast you can make a new feature. Let's see, is that a pretty good size? I'll move it over a little bit since the screen is cut off. Okay, pretty good. Um, so recently in Banshee, I, I, a couple weeks ago, I committed a new extension called FixUp, which lets you do bulk operations on your metadata to fix common problems. So you go to the Tools menu, Fix Music Metadata, and it pops up this new source under Music. And you can deduplicate artists and albums right here, so you choose what type of problem you want to solve, and then it looks for things to fix. So if, you know, it's got REM twice, but I can click to choose which one I want it to collapse into. Um, and I can apply those fixes, and I can go into albums. Um, so for example, let me show you that it actually works live. Um, so I'll do buy Beatles. So you see there's all these white albums that are, you know, some have V at the beginning, some have V at the end, some don't, don't even have it. Um, I switch the metadata fixer and apply the fix. One album. So this is cool, but what about genres? Genres often have duplicates too. You have rock with a capital R, lowercase r. So let's add right now a, uh, a new feature, the ability to deduplicate de genres. So we go into extensions, Banshee fix up. This is the normal layout here. We have all of our source code under the, the Banshee fix up directory there. Um, go ahead and edit the add in file. I'll add our genre duplicate, make file. And let's go into Banshee fix up and we'll just copy that album one over because it's a good base to start from. And we can just do a search and replace practically. Genre. And album. Let's see. So these are really similar things. There's a little bit of difference in the SQL. Um, I'm gonna make that a tiny bit smaller. So we do a bit of that. I've actually got this SQL query, query already written. Um, so I'll copy that over so we don't have to waste time doing that. It's the most complicated part of this new feature. But so now we have duplicate genres. You see the name. Um, add this query to identify the duplicate genres. And that's going to be null, so let's ignore it. So when it's looking for duplicate albums, it looks for the you know, prefixed V and postfixed V, but that's not really relevant for genres, so we'll remove that. And there's not any artists, so we'll just return this. Now, the, the cool part here is where you fix the problem. So to fix it, all we do is update core tracks, set the genre equal to the new genre, set it to the solution value for the problem, and we're replacing all these solution options, so. Let's see if that compiles. And more importantly, let's see if it works. So again, to tools, fix metadata, duplicate genres, And there's some duplicate genres. <laughs> so that's how easy it is to add a new feature. I mean, granted, that query bit might take you 10 minutes, but the rest of it only a few minutes. The code's generally pretty easy to read, 
And that's another great way to contribute to Banshee. Another way, another way that we are trying to reduce the number of hoops that contributors have to jump through to get involved is this new affiliated project we started called Banshee Community Extensions. So about six months ago, we started it, and we basically consolidated all the third-party Banshee extensions that existed all over the web, various Git repos and Subversion. I think there's a Mercurial. We consolidated it into this one Git repo, hosting gitorius.org, where anyone can create an account, no questions asked, two-day, for free, and start contributing to this project, you know, unlike GNOME Git, where you have to have uh, be vouched for and, and have some experience. So we started this as just a super easy way to, for someone to create and get distributed a new extension. It doesn't, your extension idea doesn't have to be mainstream enough for inclusion in Banshee. Um, it can be whatever you want, pretty much. And you get this common infrastructure and maintenance so you don't have to deal with much of the build system. We have a script that takes about two minutes to run that'll have you up and running with a working, running extension that I'm actually going to show you now. Go into, oops, go into Banshee Community Extensions, and we just run, create new extension, give it a name, and this will take a minute to run, so, because it has to do all the auto build stuff, but it does it for you, it takes the two minutes, but it'll be done for you. Um, and at that point, you can just open up the extension and monitor develop. You get tab completion on all of Banshee's API that you can access, everything from our player engine to see, to load up new tracks, to hardware support, you know, whatever you want to do, you'll be able to just hop in and start doing it. So it actually, you know, uses this template, customizes it with the name you gave, and then actually builds it right here. It's already building it. So ignore the telepathy extension um, warnings. And it actually does a, a git add, so you're just ready to commit this new extension right away. So let's go ahead and do make run, and I'll show you that the extension's already there and working. And that was about two minutes, I think, right? So by default, the extension um, is disabled. I think I've already enabled it before when I built it previously, so Mono Addons has it enabled. But generally, you'd need to go to edit preferences and explicitly enable it because most extensions, like I said, these aren't mainstream extensions necessarily, so our default in the template is that it's disabled. But you can see we have a foo source here. And it's got a custom view, doesn't do anything, but a working extension in two minutes. So you can edit this with the Mono develop, you can, the like, solution file, and load that up real quick, and I'll show you how you get tab completion, and you can get started hacking in Banshee right away. Loading the solution, go over to the solution pad. There's foo, already added in, foo source. And right away we can just do service manager, you know, whatever you want. We have, we've got the Banshee API right here at your fingertips. Hardware manager, et cetera. So ready to go. So that's how, that's one way we're making, knocking down those hoops, uh, knocking down those hurdles. You can just walk right in and start contributing and have less pain than before. So another real big advantage to hacking on Banshee is that we've got this enormous community. We have 60 to 90 people in our IRC chat room channel at any given time, ready to help people. Uh, we've got very active and responsive mailing list slash forum uh, and Bugzilla. And we have 140 some people who have contributed code to Banshee in its five year history, which is pretty astounding. Let's give a hand to all those people. So Banshee has a huge number of contributors, but we have a strong core team of leadership too. We have four maintainers now, Aaron and myself, Bertrand Lorenz and Alexander Kojevnikov. And Banshee is this global community, but our maintainer team is global as well. I'm on the West Coast, Aaron's on the East Coast of the US. 
Bertrands in Luxembourg, and Alexander is in Sydney. So you're never too far away from advanced maintainer. Once you do a small fix, like I showed you at the beginning, or you add a new feature, or you create a new extension, once that's accepted in to Banshee or with Banshee Community Extensions, you know, the barrier is way lower. Um, within days and very quickly, lots of people will be using your work. So, you know, every single day we have this large community and these people helping newcomers come in, but also working actively at making Banshee better. Over the last two and a half years, we've averaged 32 code commits every single week. <laughs> 10 bugs fixed every single week, and almost one new contributor every single week for two and a half years. <laughs> this chart shows you when somebody first started contributing. So down here, you can see Aaron, and these are the weeks he's active all the way across, and this is me, and that's Bertrand, and that's Alexander, and you can see the slope shows you how many new contributors, the rate of new contributors coming to the project. You can see it's ramping up, and you can see that a lot of them stay involved, which is really great. So, like I said, as soon as you get your, your contribution into Banshee, lots of people will be using it. Within a few days, hundreds of people are already gonna be using it people following our Git development branch, and people using the SUSE Alpha or Ubuntu Nightly package repositories. A little longer, we have a, about a one month release cycle. So within about a month, thousands of people are already gonna be using your work through the unstable package repositories, plus all the other people um, who are using it within a few days. If 10% of our users opt into our anonymous usage data collection, which we added a few months ago, if 10% of them opt into that, then over 55,000 people will be using your work within a month, and it's probably many more than that. And on a little longer horizon, within about six months or so, your work's likely gonna be used by millions of people. Banshee's included by default, installed by default, the default player in OpenSUSE, Migo, Foresight Linux, the Movita Media Center from Fluendo, and it's gonna be in the upcoming version of Ubuntu Netbook Edition plus all the people using Banshee on other platforms where we have packages but aren't necessarily installed by default, and our OS X users. So millions of people using your work, this huge community, let's give a hand for what we've done here, that many people using our work. So I wanna talk now about a few of our cool new features, in particular, one that a lot of people have heard a lot about recently that is just incredible, uh, that our Amazon MP3 store integration. This is just a brilliant hack and it's incredibly fun to use and useful. Within Banshee, you go to the Amazon MP3 store source, you browse Amazon just like you would in a browser because it is WebKit, but when you click get MP3 album or get MP3 song, it downloads within Banshee straight into your music library. Previews play natively in GStreamer within Banshee and the whole thing is just seamless. It feels really good. The, bench, the Amazon website's not the most beautiful, but things work well, which is really cool. So let's give a hand to Aaron for <laughs> In addition to the store, we have just download support. So if you don't want to um, browse it within Banshee, if you want to browse it with your normal browser, when you go to purchase something, Amazon will give you an AMZ file, and you can open that in Banshee, and it'll download it right into your library. And there's also a command line client to avoid the library entirely if you want. But I'm going to show you a screencast Aaron prepared. Hopefully it'll work. Um, well, let's go ahead and open it in Toto. <laughs> okay, so he's clicked on the MP3 store, got HTML5 loading, rendering using JavaScript in the canvas. He said this was a little slow, the internet's a bit slow here. The Amazon offers, in the US store at least, almost 2,000 free songs to download and over 100 albums. So if you wanna try this out without spending five, 10 bucks to get started, do that. You'll have lots of new free music.
let's see what awful music Aaron decides to download. <laughs> oh, so another huge thing I want to announce with this that I'm just thrilled to announce is that we have an affiliate code, so we make 10% of the money that you spend here. 100% of that is going to the GNOME Foundation. All right, Aaron's getting ready to buy this MP3 album. Once it does, it's going to pop up right here, just as if he was importing some music, and go straight into his library. Thanks, Aaron. There you go. So, an incredible experience. This is, a, I think, a first for such a major store integration so tightly, coupled with a player on Linux. Let's see, lost me. So much in the same way that we integrated the Amazon MP3 store, a few days after Aaron set up the technical side of that to be able to embed WebKit and do these hooks into the downloading um, and MIME type handling and such, I added support for MiroGuide.com. A MiroGuide is a nonprofit run podcast directory website. It has over 6,000 video podcasts and almost 2,000 audio podcasts categorized. You can rate, you can have an account, you can get, um, they have a curation system, and so you can find some really good content very quickly. But one cool thing is when you browse, well, let me just show you this real quick. Um, quit. Yes, without saving. No, MR is make run. Just a nice little alias. So you go to Miro Guide Source. It loads up. And at the top, you can choose between video and audio. And depending on which one, when you search here, it'll search the appropriate one as well. You can go find a, a podcast and either hover over it and just add to sidebar. Now, when I do this, watch the podcast source. I do this, and because I know it's slow, it took a whole second to add straight to podcast. You're subscribed right there, one click. And lastly, I want to show you the Internet Archive extension. So Internet Archive is a nonprofit-run online media library. It has over 80,000 concert recordings, a lot of Grateful Dead, but quite a bit of other stuff, too. 5,000 audio books, 1,000 lectures, and 7,000 historic speeches, plus a whole host of other really cool material, like historical cartoons and all sorts of things. So within Banshee, you can search it. You can see what the license is, because a lot of the things are either public domain or Creative Commons licensed. Um, you can see what use the average rating is. And once you go into an item, you can stream it live. And very soon, you'll be able to save items that you like, in particular, straight to your music, video, or audiobook library. So I hope I've shown you a few different ways that you could contribute to Banshee, to GNOME, um, you know, it can be a small little HIG fix, a text change that you, know, you could get started with today with no programming experience. You can do a bigger feature. You can create a new extension. Any of these things, you know, we want, you, we want to help you do. Um, we want you to have the confidence to do. You should have the confidence to do. Be bold. Join us. And I hope that when the time feels right, when you get that itch to help, you'll jump in and join us having fun hacking on Banshee. Are there any questions? George? Can you talk a little bit about the video support and what you plan to do in the future? Yeah, so I mean, one of the coolest things with video that Banshee does, in my opinion, is video podcasts. So that's uh, you know, one experience that we want to continue to improve. Um, I mentioned how Internet Archive will allow you to save videos soon to your video library, which I mean, honestly, I don't have a lot of videos on my system, but if I can save, you know, either save download or just save the URL so that from my library I can stream it, you know, all these the resources that are in our archive that are my favorites, that will make it much more useful to me 
Um, is that good? In, in the back? Or? Oh, well, yeah, let's go here. Closer. Um, what are the development plans and, and roadmap? Uh, I remember the, um, just, uh, um, oh, sorry, excuse me. Uh, past year, uh, uh, talk from, from Aaron, uh, when uh, talking about the infrastructure for collection application, etc., I have heard something about uh, maybe uh, redoing a spot with, based on this infrastructure. Could you please uh, explain more of it? Yeah, Ruben, the SLA maintainers here, uh, we had a buff earlier this week um, to discuss how we can share code as much as possible. Um, I think how that's going to work is it's not going to be one application, but they're going to be use so much of the same code that you'll feel the same quality in both and you know, we'll be able to really revamp that spot and get it feeling as good as the entry does. Ruben can speak a little more to it though. Um, there will be a lightning talk about this at 11.50. Thanks for running up here. <laughs> I was quite impressed by your um, new module technology. Do you think this could be extended to other GNOME projects or other projects at large that people could just start hacking like very quickly? Like via the create extension script and that yes. whole process? Um, you know, that, that process could certainly be replicated in other contexts. The exact technology probably isn't worthwhile reusing. It's just a, a Perl script, I think. Um, but yeah, making making it that easy. I, I mean, I think the Ubuntu guys are trying to do something like this with Quickly. Um, you know, we just optimized it just for Banshee, so we you know everything we can make it work very well. Um, and as for the Amazon thing, are the MP3s you download are they DRM? No, Amazon MP3 store is no DRM. Thank you. Yeah, so you can feel good when you make that purchase. No DRM and foundations benefiting. Yeah, well, just don't buy those. <laughs> Any other questions? One more. When's the version for Windows? When's the version for Windows? So the Movita Media Center is actually a product shipping on Windows now. It's basically Banshee with DVD support and codec support and some enhancements for subtitles, I believe, which hopefully Felinda will be sending us soon. Um, an actual Banshee build for Windows, you know, three years ago we said it was coming soon, so honestly it's when people step up to really help. We're closer than ever. It, you can build Banshee on Windows as a developer now, but in terms of getting an actual installer out there, we just need somebody to help us, you know, jump that last hurdle. So, any other questions? Okay, thank you very much. Thank you guys, uh, enjoy your break.